Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir. You have your parole revocation questionnaire there in front of you? Yes, sir. Uh, do you recognize your signature at the bottom? Yes, sir. All of those uh, answers that you gave, are those all accurate? Yes, sir. And are you ready to proceed today? Yes, sir. I'm going to read to you the rule violations that, that you are alleged to have violated. Then I'm going to ask you to plead either guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement, or not guilty with a statement. Then we'll yes, discuss it. Okay? Okay. The first violation is alleged 3A on or about December the 27th of 2021. You failed to get permission before moving from your residence of record. How do you plead to that? I would like to plead not guilty with a statement, sir. Okay. The next one is 3B on or about March the 4th of 2022. You left your approved residence and your whereabouts were unknown. How do you plead to that? I like to plead not guilty with a statement, sir. Okay. The next one is number 10. You have only paid $22 towards your supervision fees and are currently $2,372 in arrears on your fees. How do you plead to that? I'm going to plead guilty to that one, sir, because uh, with a statement, I'm going to plead guilty to that one statement. All right. Okay. Uh, number 13, special condition, you failed to attend sex offender treatment on October the 19th of 2021, December the 14th of 2021, January the 11th of 2022, February the 8th of 2022, and March the, 20, March the 8th of 2022. And on January the 25th of 2022, you arrived at the treatment facility and stated you had just been released from the hospital and needed to be quarantined. On 4-5-22, you arrived at the treatment center and stated you did not have $20 that you get paid on Friday. We were told you could not stay due to non-payment, but stayed anyway. On April the 14th, on the night, April the 19th of 2022, you again showed up to treatment and stated you did not have $20, but that you get paid on Friday. You were told again, you could not stay due to non-payment. On April the 19th of 2022, due to non-compliance, you were negatively discharged from sex offender treatment. How do you plead to those allegations? I want to plead not guilty with a statement, sir. Mr. Uh, Mr. Thompson, your case has been assigned to Mr. Roche. Mr. Roche is going to conduct the interview. Uh, he will begin uh, discussing with you. I'm sure he will ask you to make your statement. So it's up to uh, Mr. Roche. Mr. Roche. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, Mr. Thompson. How are you? I'm doing all right, sir. Thanks to the good Lord. Good. I'm going to give you a chance to address condition number three. You failed to get permission before you moved from your residence. You want to make a statement? Yes, sir. That's that's not that's not that's not true. I never left my my place of residence with at two five. I was I was kicked out of my apartment because I didn't have the money. To pay my 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 rent, y'all had to pay one hundred twenty five dollars every week. I didn't have the money, so I got kicked out. And I I walk around the neighborhood in the the, near, the nearest town. I never left my residence to try to find me a, a place to live to lay my head. And when I did you inform your law officer that you are out of money and that you were evicted from your apartment? I had told Mr. Everly that, sir. I had told him that man to man, face to face. Can, can okay. I back to him? And what did and what did your parole officer suggest that you do? He told me to go back, go back home, go back home to my landlord and make amends, and get a loan to get a loan. That's what he told me. That's what I did. Okay. So basically. You weren't getting along with your parole office. I mean, your landlord, you just didn't pay the rent. Right. 
I just didn't have the money to pay my rent. I didn't have a job. And she kicks me out, but she let me come back after, you know, after I scrape up some kind of hustle, up some kind of money to give her, you know what I'm saying? And on and on and on 2021, Mr. 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 Matt Rivers placed me in seven days, seven days of uh, seven days locked up. He locked me up for seven days for not uh being able to come to my class because I was working at the movie tavern here in Covington and I had okay. paid my I paid okay. we're, we're not addressing 13 yet. So tell me why you're twenty. $372 in arrears on your supervision. That must be three or four years of supervision fees. Okay, uh, Mr. Roche, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm an old man. And I, I, I've been in prison since I was 16 years old. And I've been struggling. I've been literally struggling. I'm in a state where I don't have no family or nobody to depend on or nobody to help me. And I've been struggling to pay my rent, to pay for buy my food, to try to pay for insurance on my car and pay, pay to my car notes. And I lost my car, everything. I don't have nothing, sir. And I've been struggling. Mr. Thompson, Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir. You got to help yourself before somebody else helps you. So why weren't you employed? I was having jobs, but I kept losing my jobs because of the virus. And then I stayed in the hospital 37 days on a ventilation machine. But I do have the money to pay my parole fees. I can pay the parole fees now. So tell me about condition number 13. You are, an, you are a sex offender, and you are required to attend sex offender classes. Yes, sir. For some reason, you got dismissed and thrown out the program. Tell me why. I didn't have the money for it. I didn't have the twenty dollars for that day. And when I was, I had finished doing some work or putting up a a, a, a horseshoe garage and a driveway, like the with a carport. I never did get paid for my money for putting that up in my. The man that was supposed to pay me, he went to Memphis, Tennessee to a funeral. Had I known that he was going to leave to go to the funeral, I would have got my money ahead of time. That way I would have had my money. That's where the confusion come in at. The first time, and I'm still waiting for him to come back, and he never did come back. That's why I told Mr. Everly, my parole officer, that I was going to have it on Friday, but I had wound up missing two Fridays. And that's what happened. Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir. Sit back. Relax and stop talking for a second. Oh, yes, sir. And Mr. Thompson, you are a felon. You are, you are on supervision. Yes, you sir. have responsibilities. And you, how can you exist outside without a job to pay your fees, to pay your car note? To pay your rent and my groceries. How how are you going to survive? I'm going to get me a job. But you had a chance to get a job and you didn't. I lost my job, sir, from the coronavirus. When I went to get my job, I got out of the hospital, and then I was cutting yards and doing this and that, doing odds and end jobs. Okay, okay. I had no problem with working. <laughs> You get out of the hospital. Sir? When did you get out of the hospital? Oh, uh, January. I ain't took the paper to, to the and lady that January 2021? Sir? January, January of 2021? Yes, sir. But you want to arrest it until December. In December, you failed to tell your floor officer that you had left that address. I did not leave my address. I had. Okay, 
We understand, we understand that. You got to throw it out of your apartment. Right. And I, if you look at the paper, I called the parole officer, my parole officer, several times to let him know that what well, had happened. Okay. okay. And I've been out three years and four months, and I've been paying my fees. Why all of a sudden I couldn't stop? I couldn't pay my fees. That was never taken into account. Three years and four months, and I never had a problem with this. All of a sudden, I have a problem because it, I fell off, man. Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir. Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir. Speak when I ask you a question. Yes, sir. I don't need all that rhetoric. Right. So. Yes, sir. Do you have a job waiting on you if released? Yes, sir. I do. And, and what job is that? I'm going to work at Amazon off Fremo in Slidell, Louisiana. And that's a guaranteed job. Yes, sir. Do you have, do you have evidence of that employment? No, sir. I'm, I've been locked up in this jail five months. I don't have the evidence of nothing. They, I'm locked up. Now, question, Mr. Thompson. Did you complete all four phases of your sex offender treatment when you were incarcerated? Wait a minute, say that part again. Did I complete? I, I can't hear you. Did you complete all four phases of the sex offender treatment program when you were incarcerated? Yes, sir. I completed all, I completed my whole class and I got three trades. Okay, and what facility did you complete your sex offender treatment? I completed the whole, the, the whole thing before I went there the way you did. Yeah. At what facility? Uh, Louisiana State Penitentiary, Angola. Okay. But the reason why you were drawn out of sex offender treatment is that you couldn't pay the fee. Right. You didn't right. have 20, you didn't have 20 dollars. No, I just didn't have it, sir. If I would have had, I would have paid. I've been paying it three years and four months. All of a sudden I couldn't pay it. I just couldn't pay it. I could you couldn't squeeze blood out of a term. You know what I'm saying? Things happen, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Abel, but um, if, I, if I get out now and day tomorrow, I'm gonna go pay that little. Just, 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 just a second, Mr. Sir. Thompson. Please speak when you ask the question. All right. Yes, sir. Call for the executive session at this time. You want to talk to the Let me talk to the person. Okay. All right. There's been a request for executive session. Second. Second. Call the rule, please. Mr. Yes. Mr. Maribel. Yes. Mr. Freeman. Yes. Mr. Thompson, uh, we're going to take a brief recess. Uh, we're going into executive session to discuss confidential matters. Uh, we will be back shortly. Sorry about that. I was listening from outside and I had to run back in to stop this, but the the executive session actually went for about five minutes. So I guess they're researching, trying to figure out, check his backstory, but we'll pause it and stop, start at the conclusion of it. Okay. The parole board is uh, back in session. Mr. Uh, Thompson, are you there? Mr. Thompson, somebody's there. Mr. Thompson, there he is. Okay. Mr. Thompson, thank you. Yes, sir. Have a seat. We're back. All right, sir. Thompson, uh, you said you think you have a job at Amazon. How, who have communicated with that? No, the, the, the dude that, uh, that's locked up with me, he's going to get me on there. Ah, got you. The dude that you locked up with is going to get you on. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah it's, right. a, it's a big warehouse. I got you. I hear you. Okay. Okay. We're going to hear from uh, Mr. Everly. Yes, sir. Okay. Hang on just a second. We got one question for you. Mr. Thompson, right. I heard you say earlier you had the money for your fees. How, how much money you got? I got uh, over $1,700. My okay. name is. All right, all right. That's what I wanted to know because uh, your sex offender treatment was way more important than you feel. All right, sir. Okay. All right. Be taken care of. Okay, Mr. Emily. Yes, sir. How you doing, Paul? Yeah. Hey, Steve. How you been, buddy? Good to see you. I'm good. How you doing, Pete? Great, great. Hey, um. Would they take him back in that sex offender treatment if he catches up on his arrears? I don't think so. We may have to find another place for him. Um, she negatively discharged him. So because um, she did this once before, she it built up. That's why the $95 he owes, um, he would go to the treatment and then she let him build it up. Uh, he don't have money to pay and she let him build up. That's why she stopped doing that because he was in $95 in arrears. And he kept coming. He would say, I get paid on Friday. The last two times he told me I get paid on Friday. And it was, I told him, you need to have the money. The last time he did this, I, all I said was, if you don't have the money, they're going to make me do a sanction on you, a three day sanction. And he all but flipped out on me, waving his hands in the air, said, fine, I'll just go back and do my two years. I mean, in front of everybody else. And I told him, Ron, you need to calm down. And he said, no, I'm just going and stormed around. I'm going to do my two years. And then I said, okay, better yet, you be in my office tomorrow. And at that point, he said, I think you're harassing me. So we went up there, we arrested him for violations. And that, that's where we're at today. Um, the one thing I will say is um, he did get an income tax check of eight, reportedly of $800. And that wasn't, didn't go to us. It was um, reported that he would disappear for four to five days at a time. Um, allegedly, he would do drugs and then come back after four or five days. So I have nothing against Mr. Thompson. Um, it seems like he wants to do what he wants to do on his terms and doesn't want to follow the, the, what everyone else has to follow. Appreciate it, Steve. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Emily. Thank you, sir. Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir. What did you do with your uh, income tax check? I paid. I paid off my my past debt for my rent, and uh, I went put the rest on a on a on a, a trailer house that I was a deposit on the trailer house that I was going to go get moved to in Slidell. You don't I'm need a trailer house if you don't go to sex offender class because we got a place to put you. Sir, you don't need a trailer if you don't go to your sex, don't pay your sex offender classes because we have a place to put you right where you are now. I understand this, sir. You need to get uh, your priorities straight. It doesn't seem like you're doing that. Well, I got it straight. It's just that I, I, I'm, I made a mistake. Let, let, listen very closely. Yes, you sir. don't go to sex offender class, you go to prison. Right. If, don't go to sex offender class, you go to prison. Yes, sir. That's your priority. Yes, sir. That's first thing. Uh, Mr. Lott, are you still in the room? Yes, sir. He's right here. Yes, sir. Mr. Lott, has he given y'all any trouble since he's been in there? Uh, he has not received a write-up since he's been in our facility. Okay, just, just ask him. Okay. Anything you'd like to say, Mr. Uh, Thompson, before we vote? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not no bad person. And I try, I try to do the best I can. And if I was to get out now, day tomorrow, I'm gonna go pay my parole fees and pay the ninety-five dollars for my sex offense class, sir. And I, I go to my classes. That's just. Where are you I gonna just get the money from? 
my, my boss man and my neighbor, my next door neighbor and my landlord. Well, why couldn't you get the money for the $20 if you all of a sudden you're going to be able to come up with all this money? Because I didn't know he was going to go to Memphis, Tennessee to a funeral. That's why I missed the two payments because he wound up staying in Memphis, Tennessee. He didn't come back from a funeral. That's what had happened. You missed a lot more than two payments. It's three pages. That's why it's $95. All right. But I'm going to pay it. All right. Are you ready, though? Yes. I'm ready. Mr. Uh, can, can, I, can, can I ask one? Mr. Thompson, Mr. Thompson, we are voting. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Thompson, I find you guilty of violating special condition 13 of your sex offender contract. Therefore, I revoke your supervision. Thank you, Mr. Rocher. Mr. Uh, I also find you guilty of violating your uh, sex offender contract and uh, moving without permission and uh, revoke your parole. Mr. Thompson, uh, you got two votes to revoke your parole. Uh, you know, uh, you didn't do yourself very much good today. Uh, as Mr. Avery pointed out, you've got a real attitude. and You want to do what you want to do and how you want to do it. And until you change that attitude while you're on supervision, you don't have all of the freedoms that you would have if you weren't under supervision. You're a sex offender. You by law, you're required to take sex offender treatment. And, you know, it, it, it seems to me that you had access to money. I mean, you telling me today, oh, I can get money from the landlord. I can get it from my boss. I can get it from here. You could have gotten that $20 to pay. You just chose not to. You had other priorities that you wanted to do. So it's a sad state of affairs, but you find yourself today revoked to serve your time. Kind of what you told Mr. Everly you wanted to do in the first place. So there you are. It appears that uh, you have three votes to revoke your parole. So good luck to you. Can I, can I ask you a question? Yes, oh, sir. We're done. Is, but you... Well, okay. Wow, what a <laughs> what a bad hearing. What an, in my opinion, unlikable guy, just totally oblivious. It's like he's yelling at the parole board. Uh, you know, I heard legend has it that uh his employer, the man who hired him to make the carport, is still attending that funeral. And you know, he's initially in for a 19 what was it a sexual aggravated sexual assault um uh forcible sexual assault in like 1985 i think not sure how many years he received for it uh we do you know we don't have appeals on that case but what richard does have is many, many, many lawsuits that he has filed against the prison, civil lawsuits, and they're just as uh, litigious um, or just ridiculous as you'd expect from seeing this hearing. Absolutely. You know, we'll go through some of it for, for some laughs, but it's, it's just, I mean, yeah, we just saw this. We just saw someone who what is his responsibility is to pay $125 a month rent, uh, which, you know, my guess is subsidized by the state. I'm sure the landlord is, he, is receiving market rates. Uh, so it's just his portion. That's my guess. And, you know, just not paying any of his dues. I mean, what is he, three or four, or was it four or five years in arrears? And then he's, it's just, you know, I'm happy his parole officer showed up. He looked familiar. We may have seen him once before. And it's pretty rare for parole officers to show up. I think we've seen it less, certainly less than 10 times, maybe even fewer than six. And uh, 
gosh, I'm happy that they didn't let him out. But this hearing did take place in uh, in July uh, of 2022, and since then um, he was released. It was released actually November 16th, 2023. So as a time of this recording, uh, about a month ago, a month and three days ago. Uh, and let's see if we see him again. And, uh, it, you know, it's not clear to me how if he only has two years left on his sentence, then I guess he served at his time and he won't be on parole. So he can't have a parole violation. So it could be that he can only get caught up on on a new charge that's my would be my understanding of it um you know imagine throwing a tantrum with your parole officer i'll just serve my two years and and you know he probably means it it's like hey it's just easier to serve your two years than to do everything he's doing right it was it was even funny how miss how he's like i wanted to go and buy this because i'm homeless and mr mayor bell is like you you don't need to buy a trailer because we have a place for you if you don't pay those fees. <laughs> you need to get your priorities right. It was, I like the way the board handled this. It kind of was rewarding, but, and, and it, you know, you saw his face after, and he just looked shocked. He's like, what, what just happened? How is it possible that I was, that I was denied? There's his like, it, it, and it's like, are you that, are you that oblivious to the reality? But I think he is, you know, there are some people that just don't understand, you know, and you, we'll see his lawsuit. <laughs> so let's jump into that. So he's suing the DOC and this is, this is page four that we'll just jump to page four. Thank you, Richard, for actually pulling this out because there's a bunch of documents with over a hundred pages to have to go through. Uh, I would have probably missed this. So, in a rambling and disjointed complaint, the plaintiff alleges that on November 24, 2008, the defendant, Kevin, directed that the plaintiff be escorted to prison infirmary and forced to undergo diagnostic testing. In response to this directive, the defendant, Hooker, escorted the plaintiff to the infirmary, but upon arrival, the plaintiff refused to undergo reference tests. You just picture him, you know, throwing the fit, right? and signed a refusal form for that purpose. Approximately a week later, the defendant, Sharon, approached the plaintiff and urged the plaintiff to consent to the reference test, at which time the plaintiff reluctantly agreed. The plaintiff alleges that the purpose of these tests was to look for traces of poisons, which he believed that the defendants were secretly putting in his food or medicine. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't read that <laughs> this yet. So um, it, it fits all, you know. Um, no, this. So he sued the, the the DOC employees. Like this is actually he actually sued them. S specifically, the plaintiff alleges that on several occasions the defendant Sergeant Montrell has put drugs or foreign substances into the plaintiff's food in order to cause the plaintiff harm and has encouraged the co-inmate orderlies to do the same. As proof of this assertion, the plaintiff alleges that he suffered severe chest pains on several occasions after being served food on Defendant Robinson's shift. The plaintiff also complains that the Defendant Robinson has disseminated rumors with the prison that the plaintiff is a rat, thereby placing the plaintiff in danger of harm and other, from other inmates. I mean, I guess the guy is suffering some underlying mental illnesses that uh have gone undiagnosed and haven't been born certainly born brought up at the revocation hearing in addition to the foregoing the plaintiff alleges on several occasions and unspecified dates the defendant dr williams has called the plaintiff to the infirmary and each time dr williams has requested blood and urine samples and has ordered x-rays without explanation although dr williams allegedly observed on those occasions how swollen both the plaintiff's kidneys were, the defendant failed to prescribe any medication or refer to the plaintiff to the hospital ward of treatment or surgery. Defendant Dr. Moody has also repeatedly requested blood and urine samples from the plaintiff without explanation. Um, the 
Then he had, uh, it goes on, it really, it goes on and on. On April 21st, 2009, the plaintiff requested emergency medical attention. Can you imagine having, having an inmate like this that you have to deal with and being a doctor? It's like, I'm a doctor. I went through school. I did all this stuff. And now I'm going to be a doctor in a prison. And I'm going to have patients that do this. And not only that, but they're going to sue me. It's like, do you, are you sure? Are they paying you enough, doctor? Um, the complaint is chest pain and escorted to the prison infirmary. When the results of x-rays and an EKG test were negative, the defendant, Dr. Roundtree, instructed the defendant, Christine, to inject the plaintiff with unknown medications in both hips, which the plaintiff believed were lethal and harmful drugs. According to the plaintiff, he began to suffer immediate severe burning, cramps, and dizziness, and he allegedly passed out upon re returning to his cell. The next morning, he awoke to find his kidneys were severely swollen and that he had a knot in his abdominum about the size of a grapefruit. The plaintiff, a grapefruit, wow. The plaintiff uh, further alleges that the reference medications were administered upon the orders of the defendant, who the plaintiff believes ordered Dr. Roundtree to kill the plaintiff. You know, when you read about, and this is uh, assuming he's completely sober, right? this sounds like bipolar type stuff. I just, I never understood it, but you can't. It crazy is crazy, right? Or mental illness is mental illness. But it's like, if they wanted to kill you, you'd be, you, they would have done it already, right? It's like those people who go on those meth trips and they're and they and they completely 100% believe that the FBI or the CIA is after them and everyone around the corner is after them. It's like, it's like, are you that narcissistic where you're on that kind of where you actually believe that the FBI is after you? And if they were, it's like, what's the big deal? Say, come on, arrest me. Like, but you know, me preaching about it makes me probably crazier than them. So. The plaintiff further alleges that the reference medication were administered upon the orders of the defendant, who the plaintiff believes ordered Dr. Roundtree to kill the plaintiff. In addition, the plaintiff believes that the actions of the defendants are all undertaken at the request of the defendant. I mean, he actually, this is in a lawsuit, are in direct retaliation for grievances which the plaintiff has filed against security officers and health care providers at LSP. Louisiana State Penitentiary. This is Angola. Finally, on May 17, 2009, the plaintiff requested emergency medical attention and was escorted to the infirmary, the defendant Robert Haynes, with complaint, intense pain, swelling of both kidneys. Uh, I mean, this goes on for another eight pages. I'm not going to read more of it. I think we get the gist. There's a lot of this. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. So, you know, the guy liked to spend his time suing. He must have been very popular in prison, huh? But he got his wish. He uh, he served out his time. He is out now. It's only been a month. If some For some reason, we see him again. We'll do the hearing here. Thank you, Richard, again. And for that, or not for that. With that, I'll let you go.